is a lovely day, isn't it? Yes, it is indeed a lovely day. Excuse me. That's Prince Louis. Good, Good morning, morning Prince Louis. Good morning. Good morning. What can I do for Your Excellency today? Well, I have come to pick up a suit of buckskins that I ordered to be delivered. Forgive me, Your Highness. I, I would have delivered them myself within the hour. To think you have been put to the trouble of coming here. It is no trouble. I assure you, I merely want to see the suit before it leaves your shop. Oh, by all means, by all means. Do you like it, Your Majesty? No, I do not like it. I ordered a simple, ordinary sort of buckskins to wear the hunt, not, not a costume for the opera comique. But surely, sire, you were jesting. What will the people of Kentucky think? I don't care what the people of Kentucky think. I want a suit of buckskins by tomorrow evening. Is that clear? Yes, Your Highness. I'll have them, Your Highness. Can not tell you how mortified I am? Please, don't excuse me. I know who you are. Don't be giving me that stuff about royal blood. I got blood too, see? Excuse me, in, in this heaven-blessed country, anybody's just as good as somebody else. And... Nobody's as good as everybody else. the trouble. The trouble, Bernard, is that no one will let me be what I am. An ordinary man. Not quite ordinary. You do bear the Bourbon name, and for over 200 years, the Bourbon has sat upon the throne of France. Yes, but no Bourbon sits there now. The revolution has seen to that. Yes, but if the monarchy is ever restored, you shall be king. Come, come, sit down. Have a glass of wine. I have prepared for you <coughs> potage à la Condé and gigot à la Miei. Bernard, as always, I'm sure it is delicious, but I don't think I can eat right now. One taste of the soup and you will be all appetite. And I was wondering, sire, Kentucky being such a primitive place, if I shouldn't take along my rack of spices and seasoning. Bernard, I may cancel my trip to Kentucky. But no, you have looked forward so long to a trip to the American wilderness, to, to hunt, to fish, to roam as you please. Exactement. To roam as I please. Mais c'est impossible. How can I roam as I please when always it is, may I carry your gun, your highness, what is your wish for dinner, votre noblesse, don't trip over the log, I tell you I can't stand it any longer. May I remind you, your highness, that the, the reason you have received such a generous reception in America is because the people are grateful for the part your country and your family played in gaining them their independence. It is gratitude, not homage, that they offer you, and it ill becomes you to reject it. Yes, yes, I know you are right. You know, Bernard, it is funny, but you seem to know the role that I should play better than I know it myself. And you could play it? Mais oui. You! You could play it? I'm afraid I don't understand. I will explain. No one in Kentucky has ever seen either you or me. My clothes, they fit you exactly. Nobody knows the history of my family better than you, so... Alors... Prince Louis Philippe, you shall go to Boonsborough, and I, I, I shall go on my hunting trip if that buffoon ever finishes my buckskins and, and roam as I please. I, Bernard, impersonate a Bourbon? Yes. My father and my grandfather and my great grandfathers would swarm from their grave and carry me off to perdition for such a sacrilege. No, no, no. Nonsense, Bernard. You don't understand. It's only for a couple of weeks. Then, when I have had my hunting trip, you can be yourself again. But, sir. Noblesse oblige. Nobility imposes obligations upon him who holds the title, and the title is yours. And while you are in Boonsborough, Bernard, you shall have it. I, I would only disgrace it. Bernard, as a friend, I ask you to do it for me. I cannot. Very well. As your prince and your sovereign, I command you. <laughs> Do it. Daniel Boone was a man 
yes, a big man. With an eye like an eagle and as tall as a mountain was he. Gentle Moon was a man, yes, a big man. He was brave, he was fearless, and as tough as a mighty oak tree. From the coonskin cap on the top of old Dan to the heel of his raw high shoe. The rippin'est, roarin'est, fightin'est man the frontier ever knew. Material's gone. It's all on account of the principal. What's he gonna care if I have white satin britches? I'm the one who cares. Now you come right along. Well, every once in a while you gotta please somebody else, and as long as it's your ma you're pleasing, I think you ought to go in there and get measured. I'm gonna be the laughing stock. <laughs> Mrs. Pepper, give that to me. I saw it first. You did not see it first. You just got to it first. All right, so it's mine. It is not yours. It is mine. It was mine. I was reaching for it, and then you bumped into me. What got me in? Please, please, will Mother, you put please. this down? I don't want to broke the dress anyway. Well, if you, you think, think I want you to meet the friend and Lizzie Woolsey, oh, oh, let him catch. Oh, oh, oh Mr. Pepper, free. Oh, your daughter doesn't want it. Mine does. You're Daniel, behaving like an absolute child. Get me out of here, will you? Israel, if you don't hold still. Thank goodness, you're such a little wiggle worm. Don't like turn on clothes. Well, it's not gonna kill you. Got an empty teepee at the village if you need it. Is that no way to turn And there, now that wasn't too bad, was it, young man? Uh, I guess you can run along. Hi, my Natalie. Satin britches. Well, what are you fixing up for yourself, Rebecca? Oh, I've got some nice material at home I've been saving for a very special occasion. But, you know... It takes a lot of satin to make britches for him. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I wasn't really thinking of britches anyway. I was more thinking of a uh, tunic and shirt. You've got all of my measurements. Uh, why don't you just fix me something simple and work a day? Besides, we came by to tell you I've got to leave. Leave? With the prince coming? I will try to get back before the prince gets here, but we've got a string of trap lines, and you can't leave trap lines unattended. Daniel Boone, somehow I don't quite believe you. Oh, yes, he has trap lines out. There might be some poor old animal caught in a trap right now. Yeah, that's what we came by to tell you, and the sooner we leave, the sooner we'll get back. Get me out of here, will you? Just give it to me. Don't you think if you just measured it, there might be enough for both of you? Yes. But we don't want you dresses just alike. Mother, of course not. Papa will be fine. Look, there's plenty of them. No, but ladies. No. I'm going out of business before I go out of my mind. Good evening, Israel. Hi, Edgar. You're not here for the purpose of meditation? Oh, there's a woman in there. Keep taking their clothes on and off. Mom made me come out here. <laughs> well, that's proper for a lad your age, but I trust a gentleman of maturity can enter. What would you want in for? I came to escort Susan home if I can pry her from her mother's clutches. Imagine that, Cincinnatus. Charging me 75 cents a yard for this material when I know for a fact it's been on the shelf for months and him willing to give it away for anything at all. Serves you right. Serves you right. For insisting on it when I saw it first. I didn't want it, Mother. Stand up, Virginia. I think you did, Virginia. And I think it was wonderful of you to give it up for me. Oh, uh, just a moment. Aha, uh -huh, may I come in? <laughs> no, while, Edgar. Edgar Coventry. <gasps> Mother? Here, put this on. All right, Edgar, come on. Ah, and how are the royal seamstresses doing? Ah. Ooh, ooh. 
superb, Mrs. Boone. Mm. How I envy your son. I should tell him that. Maybe he'd be more willing to wear it. Oh, I shall. I shall. Ha, 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 ha. Simplicity. But you have the skirt too long, Mrs. Brewster. What do you mean, too long? It's right at the instep where it belongs. Well, that's well enough for an ordinary occasion. But you must realize that the prince is accustomed to something a little more daring. Uh, I'd suggest that you shorten it. Just enough to, to reveal a hint of ankle. Mother, you'll do no such thing. Certainly not. There's a limit to the exposure of a girl's nether limbs. Do you like it? Hmm, turn around. Very modest and becoming, but, uh... Isn't the bodice too loose? Too loose? Mm -hmm. If it were any tighter, I couldn't breathe. That could be the fault of your corset. Edgar Coventry, I'd rather you didn't speak of such things in my daughter's presence. Not till you're properly married. I'm sorry, Mrs. Pepper. I merely want Susan to look her best. Uh, Prince Louis Philippe may be a king one day, and kings have courts and ladies in waiting. He may recall the beautiful girl he met in Kentucky. And you'd let her go to France? Well, I'd go with her, of course. A woman who has favor with a king is in a position to win many rewards for her husband. Oh, Edgar. Well, it's true, Susan. Our whole future could be decided at the forthcoming ball. Ball? <laughs> Hold on, you mean. Oh, no, no, not at all, Mrs. Boone. The character of a party is determined by the personages present. We will be entertaining a prince. And I may have mentioned at one time or other that my grandfather was a baronet. Yes, Edgar, I believe you have mentioned it at one time or another. Yes, unfortunately, my father was a third son and due solely to the laws of primogeniture could not inherit the title. So we migrated to America. Nonetheless, my ancestry should provide the prince with the proper reassurance that uh, he's not alone on the wild frontier. <laughs> as far as we can come without me taking half of the mire to rest up. I'm looking at my dinner room. Where's yours? Well, I'm gonna let you have a little of this grouse that I shot. Then I'd rest and I built a fire to cook it on. And again, I might not. I'll sell for half. at me. Yep. It might go off. You're right again, so just do like I say and step out. Come on. Come on. Come on. I do not understand. You You are how to take me to Boonesboro. We don't take kindly to royalty around here. We just got through fighting war to get rid of a king. So there ain't no sense in being nice to a prince. Now march off you under them woods. But why? What are your intentions? Why? I kind of think that's plain enough, that team and this coach. Trunk full of fancy goods. And uh, maybe a handsome sum of money. I kind of like that coat you're wearing, too. So just take it off. You are brigands! Huh? You're not in any position to be calling people names. Let's have the coat. Come on. But if you leave me here, I, I'm lost. I will starve. The, the savages might kill me. Yeah, that's right. That's what we're hoping people around here will think. And this looks like it'll fit you. And, uh, let me see that. Oh, yeah. Hmm. That makes me hell, huh? But, but why, why? You have what you want. Why murder me? <coughs> well, we ain't never killed a prince before. <laughs> Get over here. W would it make any difference if I were not a prince? Nope. But I'll tell you what, I'm going to give you a chance. 
just because they don't like to shoot setting birds. Now go ahead and take a run for it. <laughs> go on, run for it. The Bourbon does not run. Well, whatever suits you. Hold it. Well, we got him, boss. What are we going to do with him? Well, I reckon we'll just have to turn him over to the law. You're not going to let them get away. Oh, they won't go far afoot. I'll have some of my Tuscarora Braves round them up in the morning. Tuscarora Braves? Then you must be an American Red Indian. The first I've met. Some of us are redder than others. And from what I overheard the last few minutes, you must be Prince Louis Philippe, the man we're expecting in Boonesboro. I wish I were in a position to deny that. Well, uh, I'm Donald Boone. This is Gabe Cooper. Why don't we take your coach on over to my camp and uh, get a little sleep, and we'll have you in Boonesboro by noon tomorrow. Here's your coat, Prince. How is it, Prince? Uh. visiting royalty, we, it just has to be done, that's all. Now, here's Mrs. Brewster and uh, Mrs. Pepper. Don't I get one? Well, you're included in your mother's protocol, the same as uh, Susan is and Mrs. Pepper, and uh, Virginia is with <laughs> Mrs. Brewster. Yeah, but w what does it mean? Well, each slip of paper has a number on it, and uh, that's how we line up to be presented to the prince. And I think as long as Daniel is the founder of this here settlement, well, we ought to give the Boones number one, and me. <laughs> I'm the next man of importance around here, so I should give myself number two, and uh, so on, in order of personal importance. Gave me a number 13. He gave me number 24. What makes you think there are 23 people around here of more consequence than me and my Virginia? And putting me behind the peppers, she's never had a day's schooling in her whole life. I got my schooling on my mother's knee. And that's a sight more than anything you got. Just don't you start up now, with me. Mother, you hear that? Just mother, don't start stop. up with me. Mother, who cares? I ladies, care. Ladies, please. I care. Well, now, ladies, please. A thing like this can change your whole life. Ladies, please. This is protocol. It's, it's got to be done. Oh, uh, Edgar, uh, here's yours. Who gave you the right to protocol us? You'll not insult my Susan with a number 13. One hundred and twenty? Since Ananas, despite your age, I'm of a mind to chastise you. I shall not submit to such degradation. Well, not, not Edgar, it's ladies and old folks first, remember. But uh, Susan will be with me, and not her mother. Furthermore, as I may have told you once, my grandfather was a baron. Yeah, well, he must have been posthumously promoted because the last time I heard he was only a baronet. I'm saying, as a person of, of noble ancestry, my place is at the prince's side. Right, he's, he's just, just not there. Oh, quiet! All of you, quiet! Just calm down. Cincinnatus is quite right when right. he says we do have to have a system of order. Mm -hmm. However, no one has the right to say who comes first. Well, now, Becky. We'll, uh, mm, take this hat and we'll drop all our numbers in. That's a better idea, Becky. Yes, That's Shake fair. Shake and That's draw. Fair. It's only fair way. All, all right. All the numbers? All right, Becky. Now, then, may I have your numbers, please? Here we go. Oh, I don't know who put him in charge. He's getting oh, insufferable. Here we are. He's getting all absolutely Alrighty. insufferable. <laughs> there they are, Becky. Yours, too. Well, that ain't true protocol, Becky. Cincinnati, you drop that number two in this hat, Come and on, you now. do it right put it now. On. Now, no, Becky, no, no, no more than that. Please, Becky. Oh, well. It doesn't make any difference anyway, because, uh... I'm going to be standing right alongside of the prince to introduce him to all of you. <laughs> How come you went riding off to the frontier with two fellows you didn't even know? Oh, they were hired at the last minute. It was necessary to use someone who didn't know the prince. Didn't know the prince? Uh, know me, that is. 
I'm sorry if I sometimes speak of myself in the third person, fault of my education. Caesar always wrote of himself in the third person. Not that I compare myself to Caesar. But the way those two fellows were talking, they knew you were the French, all right. Yes, sir, of course. They, they were definitely of the opinion that the passenger was Prince Louis Philippe. Well, uh, how'd they find out? Why, uh, that's what they were told. But you said they weren't supposed to know you. Oh, I did? <laughs> yes, it is very confusing. Reasons of state. Well, it almost cost you your life. You know, I really admired the way you stood your ground when that fella told you to run for it. There's nothing to admire. I am duty-bound to uphold the honor of the Bourbon name. Although I assure you, I would rather have come here in the guise of a plain citizen. It's too late for that. Everyone's expecting you. Well, I only hope they've not gone to a lot of trouble. Well, when I left, all the women were getting rigged up in the new dresses, and I never met a woman yet that considered that a hardship. I hope you don't mind if I ride up here with you. <laughs> no, uh, suit yourself, Prince. Get up. <laughs> We're going to have a rehearsal. Now then, uh, who's got number one? I've got it. All I've right, come it. right on down here. Yeah. And, and all the rest of you, uh, line up and back up her according to the number you have. Come along. Be careful. Don't step on the... Oh, dear. Mother, I feel so conspicuous being first. Couldn't we trade places with someone else? Well, certainly not. <laughs> Mother. You know, all you've done this week has embarrassed me. I'll help you with the flowers and the food, but I won't stand for any more of the silly protocol. I'm going home. You could just meet the prince without me. Virginia! Now, just a minute. I'm the first. All right. I'm going to give you your order. You will come down to the steps, come up the right side, and be presented to his highness, and then you will turn around and go down the left side and on out the red carpet. Now, all right. Mrs. Brewster, come ahead. <clears throat> I'm going to present uh, myself as Cincinnatus and also His Highness. Mrs. Hyacinth Brewster, Your Highness. Pleased to meet you, Your Honor. No, 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 not Your Honor. That's for a judge. Now, you're supposed to kiss my hand and then curtsy. Huh. I'm not going to soil my lips on your dirty old paw. Coach is coming. The coach is coming, everybody! The coach is coming! Oh, no, everybody, back, back in your places! Hurry up, take your places! Music! Back the music! The music! Come on, please, you play! Get back to where you were! What happened to the protocol? Oh, no! Why are you doing it? Hey, wait! Out of the way! Get aside, that's why I get through. Oh! Daniel? I figured this is going to be the prince's coach. This is the prince's coach. We met up in the woods and I drove it in. Well, ain't you going to open the door for him? Open the door? I'll do it myself. Move out but... of the way. Welcome to Boonesboro, Your Highness. Your Highness? Cincinnatus. Cincinnatus. This is Prince Louis Philippe. Forgive us, Your Majesty, but how are we to know that... <clears throat> we are ready for you, Your Highness. Ready for you to walk down the royal pathway. Everybody, move, move! Cincinnati! Move out of the way! Cincinnati! Oh, hold on just a minute. Cincinnati, uh, the prince has had a long, hard journey, and he needs time to rest up before you start anything like this. Oh, rest. Yes, of course. We, uh, <clears throat> we certainly don't mind waiting. Uh, we just stand here and wait. Uh, thank you, Monsieur Boone, but uh, it would be rude of me to make them wait after all these preparations. There is only one thing, the music. Well, ain't it being played right? Oh, he, he plays it beautifully. Well, it's the Marseillaise, your country's national anthem, sir. Yes the song of the triumphant Republicans who cut off the head of my father and the head of my cousin, King Louis XVI, and of his 
beautiful wife, Mary Antoinette, and the heads of my uncles and nephews, and who would cut off the head of Louis Philippe as well if they could get their hands on him. This is Rufus C. Hoops, Your Majesty. Enchanté. Miss Gertrude Hastings, Your Exaltation. Charmant. Mr. Richard Hibbs, Your Sublimity. How do you do? Mr. Rip. Uh, Mrs. Sylvia Pepper, Your Highness. Uh, <clears throat> Miss uh, Susan Pepper and Mr. Edgar Coventry, your pomposity. Delighted, Prince Louis, delighted. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> you must forgive Cincinnatus for failing to introduce us properly. Okay. He is, I fear, somewhat provincial. Will you hold your tongue, young man? Oh, please don't let us engage in any altercation in the presence of royalty. <laughs> we seem to be the last in line, a ridiculous situation, and not to be construed in terms of protocol. Oh, you must be weary. Please sit down. Susan, take the chair on Prince Louis' right there, and I shall sit right here on his left. Get off my coat! I'll go see to your room, your high uh, Since, um, Cincinnatus didn't mention it, well, I'm forced to tell you myself, uh, my grandfather was a duke. A duke? Uh, that was after he was a baron. Uh, English, not French. Uh, the Duke of Coventry, as my name implies. His forebears came with, uh, from French Normandy with William the Conqueror and were no doubt well acquainted with many of your own illustrious ancestors. Yes, I'm sure that our ancestors were of a similar station. Oh, <laughs> you see, Susan? Those of noble blood recognize each other at once. <laughs> it's as though we wear our titles on our brows. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I trust you won't think me immodest for making my background known to you. Oh, no. uh, you are a stranger here, and you may want advice concerning which people to cultivate and whom to avoid. Uh, for example, much as I re regret relinquishing the pleasure, hmm? it might be fitting if you opened our ball by selecting Susan as a partner. Oh, well, Edgar, that depends entirely upon the prince. However, if you should ask, I would accept. <laughs> uh. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, you will excuse me for a moment, please. I, I really must freshen up. Oh, oh, excuse me. Excuse me, please. Oh, excuse me. Oh, 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 forgive me. I... Oh, it was ice cream. I'm sorry. It was entirely our fault. I, I... I just wasn't looking where I was going. No, we. We? Oh, allow me to introduce myself. Oh, I, I know who you are, Your Highness. It, it seems I've met everyone in Boonesboro, except, except you. Well, I'm Virginia Brewster, Your Highness. <laughs> you know, you're the first girl in Boonesboro who didn't try to curtsy. Well, I guess I didn't want to look badly doing it foolishly. I would much rather hold your hand. How do you say, uh, shy like me? You mean like us? Oui. I'm only the pretender to the throne. Do you speak French? No. Then I can tell you the truth. Uh, je suis un imposteur. Oui, je m'appelle Bernard, domestique de Prince Louis Philippe. <laughs> oh, well, I think I better be going. Oh, let, let me carry it for oh, no, you. No, no, really, I can't. Oh, do please, it. I insist. No, I. Mademoiselle! You... Ah, bonjour, Monsieur Boone. What does that mean? Oh, it means uh, good day. I figure it's a bum day. Why is that? Got nothing to do except sit around and keep my trousers clean. Can't play. All I can do is girls' work. Well, why don't you change your trousers? No one wants me to wear them. They're in your honor, sir. Oh. Like me, you make yourself miserable because of a higher authority. 
But sometimes that is necessary. And you get bossed around too? Uh, would your highness care to join me in a drink? Well, perhaps we can join everyone for a drink. Oh, well, whatever your highness wishes. Yes. Um, may I accompany you? Uh, I don't. Make way for his highness. Come, come, move, move. No, no, please. Oh, please, right this oh. way. <laughs> oh. We can't have you standing, your highness. No, wait. <laughs> I... I, I have a special uh, table for oh, you, right over here. Right. Out of the way. That's right. Well, I uh, have a uh, special wine I've been saving for you. I <coughs> hope it measures up to what you're used to. <laughs> what, what are the others drinking? Oh, just my regular blue thunder. Not fitting for a king. You mentioned something earlier about a, a room. Oh, yes, right upstairs. Well, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, I would like uh, very, very much to retire. Retire? Oh, well, uh, yes, yes, of course. We have everything all moved in there all ready for you. Uh, you right much. up the stairs. I'll yes. show you where oh, sorry. it is. Yes, thank you. Right up the stairs. Thank you very much. Rest well, Your Highness. I just can't understand. You reckon I did something to hurt his feelings? I'm sure that wine that you selected for him is the wrong vintage. And you'd better take care of what you feed him. He is accustomed to French cooking. <laughs> Baked a cake in my life. You have been putting him through quite an ordeal, Cincinnati. Yeah. We got to know him on the road, and he's not one to put on airs. I was only trying to show him our appreciation for his coming to Boonesboro. I think you ought to let the man be himself. Yes. Oh, uh, oh, Your Highness, something was wrong with the bed? It occurred to me that I should oversee the preparation of the Prince's Banquet. The Prince's Banquet? What does he mean by the Prince's Banquet? He often speaks of himself like he was someone else. That's quite proper. Sometimes we even refer to ourselves in the plural. <laughs> We do. I could not resist the aroma of your cooking. <laughs> ah, what, what kind of a fowl is this, Mrs. Brewster? Uh, it, it, it's a wild turkey, Your Highness. Oh. But he's a young one, so he should be tender. But surely you intend to uh, debone it before sewing it up? Uh, debone it? Yes. I will show you. Excuse me, please, if it is. <laughs> do you have, please, a small knife? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, will this do? Ah, yes, that would be perfect. Excuse me, please. During my uh, many years in exile, I've had to learn many things in order to survive. that it will hold more stuffing now, and if you bind it with bacon strips, it will best itself. Thank you, Your Highness. Ah, and this must be uh, ice cream. <laughs> we say glace in French. Mmm, delicious. But this calls for an Arctic potato. An Arctic potato? Yes, may we clean away some of this. You may yes. take this away. Mm -hmm. Merci. Yes, and I, I will get to those. Yes, this. We'll use one of these. Like that. Oh, la la. A prince engaging in menial labor. <laughs> eh bien, would you please add a little bit of sugar as I beat? Yes? Mm -hmm. Like that? Yes, a little bit, please. Ah, very good. Very good. I see. I see. 
Now we hollow out a cake. <laughs> oh, Virginia, a large serving of ice cream, please. A mm -hmm. uh, small uh, uh, baking pan, someone? Hmm? Oh, uh, oh, oh, um, will this do? Oh, yes, perfect. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Uh, now into the pie with it there. Mm -hmm. Perfect. All right. There we are now. A little meringue. A fair comes le meringue. Le fond, le meringue. Ainsi c'est fait. And now into the oven with it. Bake ice cream. Ah. <laughs> Un, deux, trois, quatre, cinq. Now. You'll find the ice cream still frozen inside. Excusez-moi. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, Israel, uh, run tell Sansonatus I need a cup of his best brandy. Mm -hmm. Let me see. Virginia, uh, a, a cup of flour. Uh, we will use the yolks. I used in the meringue. Uh, some milk. Sugar and oil. Yes, yes, dump right in there. Mm -hmm. Bon. Okay. Oh, would you also please get me this, uh, yes, that small hot frying pan on the top of the oven? Mm -hmm. Thank you, Virginia. This is hot enough? Uh, parfait, parfait. Some sound effect. Cincinnati says it's the closest thing he has to brandy. <laughs> Très bien. Oh, mon Dieu. I need a. Uh, um, Oh, Monsieur Boone, uh, could you bring me a small, uh, uh, um, a small splinter of blazing wood? Yes, thank you. Now, we pour the brandy into the pan. It's just close to brandy. <laughs> just close to brandy, yes. Ah, thank you. Now, as we touch the flame to the spirits, please observe the beautiful results. Come on, the blood! Oh. It was not close enough. Oh, look at your new white trousers. Oh, it, it was all my fault. Oh, Madame Buna, will you ever forgive me? Uh, nothing, Your Highness. He can just run along home and change clothes. Oh, Ma, do I have to? Well, of course you do. You can't run around with batter all over you. I'm an alley. Only satin breeches I ever had. And now, ladies, we shall prepare the sauce de Richelieu. Just a first course. Never tasted such good food. <laughs> Excuse me, but uh, why isn't anyone dancing? Oh, they're just waiting for you to grab a partner and start things off, Louis. Oh, and here I stand doing nothing. How rude of me. Well, why don't you grab somebody up and give them a whirl? Y yes. Yes, I believe it is. <laughs> I always feel that a woman should have the first dance with her husband, but uh, since he cannot dance until I do, will you have it with me, Madame Boone? With your permission, Monsieur. Why, I'd love to, Your Majesty. I swear to you, Sylvia, I never tasted anything like this salad in my life. 
The dressing sends shivers up and down my spine. <laughs> I can't imagine what the prince put in it. A thousand thanks, madame. Oh, it's my pleasure, Your Highness. And to you, monsieur. All right, everybody. Ladies' choice and ladies' tag. Start the music. <laughs> Here's your chance. Ask him. Well, I'm not sure he wants to dance with he you. He only thinks I might be jealous. Surely that's not so good. Uh, surely it won't be conspicuous if we have a dance now. All right. Excuse me, hmm? Your Excellency. Uh, ladies' choice. Would you like to dance? Oh, uh, thank you very much, but I have just been asked. He refused you? No, no. Virginia asked first. Well, well you can cut in. <laughs> Did you ever dance on the bare ground before? Not ground. Clouds. <laughs> Ladies tag. Virginia, and cutting in. <laughs> now I can tell my grandchildren I once danced with a prince. Oh? How many do you have? I like that. You hardly had ten steps with him. Go on, cut back in, Virginia. Mother, I can't tag someone, just tag me. Well, I'll fix that. Tag, Susan. You are uh, the mother of Georgie. Uh, That's right. <laughs> That's right. You're in, Hyacinth. Oh, I do. All right, Virginia, cut back in now. Go on. Mother. You are uh, Susan's mother. Huh? Tag, mother. Oh, yes, dear. Of course. Oh. Oh. Wasn't that sweet of mother to do that for us? Uh, excuse me for a moment, please. Virginia! You're not leaving? Yes. Then may I see you home? No, no, I don't think that'd be wise. But why? I do not feel that you dislike me. I have the feeling that you like me very much. I do. It's fun cooking with you. And I know I like you. No, you don't. Or you wouldn't be so cruel. Cruel? Because the more I see, the... And you know nothing will ever come of it. A week or two weeks, and then you'll be gone. I will not be a pastime. Not even for a prince. Believe me, you are not a pastime. I wish I could be with you always. And I wish you wouldn't say that. Because it only makes it hurt a little deeper. That's why I'm going home. Please, Virginia, you do not understand. I, I am bound by duty to uphold the honor of the Bourbon name. Is it honorable to, to make a girl dream silly, impossible dreams? They're not silly. Family tradition, the abyss of a lifetime, reverence for a name, a title, obedience to a command. Obedience to a command? Your Highness, you're not behaving like a proper prince. And for a good reason. I am not a prince. I'm not a prince. I'm not a prince. I'm not a prince. I'm not a prince. Then who are you? I'm Bernard, a pretender. I'm actually Prince Louis-Philippe's servant, his cook. His cook? I've been bowing and scraping to a cook. This man is a scoundrel. He's made fools of all of us. And I'm gonna give him the thrashing of his life. Watch out! Yes, I have deceived you. But I have you to thank for making me realize how abysmally stupid I have been for playing a role I never wanted. 
Me to thank? Yes. Like me, you have been playing a silly role because of a misplaced horn and name and a title. I offer you all my sincerest apologies. But if you have bowed to a title, then so have I. I've stood proxy for a prince because a prince commanded me to do so. And if I ever see him again, I will tell him what a generous reception you have prepared for him. But I'm not sure I will ever see him again. Does it make a difference? I'm only a cook. Does it make a difference? Well, I'll say. Imagine all that fuss over a common cook. <laughs> Edgar, will you please shut up? Susan. Susan. Oh, dear. Excuse me, please. <laughs> well, all I can say is we may have had the wrong prince, but we sure had the right protocol. <laughs> <laughs> well? Your Highness, I have some good news for you. Tomorrow you shall be dethroned. <laughs> I, I presume your, your hunting trip went, went well. Oh, yes, as you can see, it was capital. And uh, Bernard, I have you to thank for that. And I have you to thank. Tell me, Bernard, how did you enjoy playing me? Immensely. <laughs> it, it taught me to be my, myself, Your Highness. Oh, Bernard. Oh, no, no, there. There's no longer need to pretend. They know I'm only a cook. Bernard, I sense that maybe you no longer serve me. By your leave, sire. You have your freedom. I envy it. <laughs> Virginia Brewster, may I introduce Louis Roy, a friend. How do you do? Jig, mister? He's mine. I saw him first, and I'm teaching. I'll teach. Avec une, je peux danser. Allez-y, Louis. Dansez le jig. Écoutez-moi, c'est un peu Bernard. Je peux danser avec une, mais pas. Oh, merde, stop that. Oh, merde, stop that. Turn them around. Fais le jig. I don't. 